The eternal debate of zonal versus man marking occurs every time a team concedes a corner, with both parties never truly agreeing on what system is better. But a topic that is often overlooked is the concept of man or zonal in open play, and how the defensive side of the game has shifted from one approach to the other constantly throughout the years. In today's video we're going to take a look at the main differences between these two styles of football, and how modern systems such as Thomas Tuchel's Chelsea use a mixture of both to get the most out of their team, and achieve one of the best defensive records in Europe. Marking is an extremely important skill for every footballer to master, and can be defined as a defensive strategy, which aims to prevent your opponent from gaining control of the ball and limiting their influence on the game. The concept of marking has varied greatly over the years, with different managers coming from different schools of thought on whether one system is better than the other. Before we go into more detail, let's first understand the main differences between zonal and man marking. When man marking, each player will be instructed to follow their counterpart and ensure they have no space to work the ball forward. To be a great man marker, the defender must always be aware of where the player he is marking is. It's less about tackling and dispossessing the opposition, but rather a constant pressure, shutting down passing lanes and ensuring he is not an option for his team. We usually see this method against world-class players, or players who are known to excel if given too much space and so a manager may instruct a specific player to man-mark their counterpart throughout the game, often leading to either an embarrassment for the defender or a rough night for the star. However, it is a system that does leave the team vulnerable if not executed correctly, and can quickly lead to a disorganised defence. For example, if the opposition can dribble past the defender, or with a quick 1-2, then the whole team will need to move to close the man down, which can lead to a domino effect on the rest of the team, forcing other defenders to abandon their man. For this reason, man marking is only usually used for specific situations. Now, zonal marking flips this concept on its head, and managers that adopted this system felt that it wasn't the players that were dangerous, but the space that they occupy. For this reason, a zonal marking system will look to have the whole team move together to close off dangerous areas of the pitch, either by squeezing the space available or by shutting off key passing lanes. The main trade-off being that some players may get more time on the ball. However, if effectively closed down, then there's little to worry about. With this approach, the priority is no longer the opposition, and simplifies the job of the defender, who now has specific triggers for any situation. Throughout history, the meta has shifted constantly from man-marking to zonal, with each manager learning from their predecessors and improving on these ideologies, leading to the highly tactical defensive structures we see in the modern game. But what we see today is simply just a progression and you'd be surprised to realise how much we're still dependent on ideas from 50 years ago. But before we take a look at that, I just want to thank today's sponsor, OneFootball. OneFootball is hands down the best app for any updates in the football world. From transfers, statistics, goal scorers, assists, or any news, OneFootball will cover it. It's the best app to have while you're watching a game, as it gives you live statistical updates and commentary to help you better understand how the game is being played. OneFootball makes following your favourite team incredibly simple, and the best part about it is that it's completely free. So if you think it's something you might enjoy, click the link in the description down below to get started. Thank you to OneFootball, and let's take a look at the history of zonal versus man marking. Zonal marking was the first way defence was played, however I doubt it was even called zonal marking, as players would simply stand in an area of the pitch and hope to win the ball if the opposition came near them. Around the 1950s is when marking started to get a name for itself. In this decade, the most common formation was the WM, and given that both teams would usually end up being lined up in this manner, it naturally led to the players marking their counterpart, as they would constantly be in the same position. However, it didn't take long for teams to figure out how to outsmart the man marking system. In 1953, the Hungarian striker Hideguti completely outsmarted the English defence, playing as a false nine and winning the game 6-3. The first true shift into the concept of zonal marking came with the rise of the Catenaccio, which reached its peak in the 60s with Herrera at Inter. The main principle lies in tight man marking and the use of an additional defender known as the sweeper or libero to form a double defensive line. The main job of the libero would be to clean up any long balls and nullify any attack. The German Franz Beckenbauer is an excellent example of a great sweeper. It's a system that didn't last too long, because football was entering an era of incredible transformation, thanks mostly to Dutch Total Football and subsequently Arrigo Sacchi's AC Milan. 
While Total Football is mostly remembered for the incredible attacking football and positional rotations, it took the idea of zonal marking one step further, and adopted the concept of squeezing the space with a very high defensive line, often catching the opposition offside and ensuring the team can recover the ball with an aggressive high press. However, it was with Arrigo Sacchi that zonal marking took the spotlight. Within his team, the players had four reference points. The ball, the space, the opponent, and your teammates. These four concepts completely revolutionized the game, with all top teams slowly adopting at least one of these principles within their defensive tactics. Firstly, with position-oriented zonal marking, the player's reference point is his teammates. The team simply operates in its desired formation, in which the respective positions are clearly defined and a player covers his own position, moving as a block with his teammates. Secondly, man-oriented zonal marking could be considered as the middle ground between man marking and zonal. In this system, you play with a basic formation, in which the reference point is the opponent. From their respective starting position, the defending players will orient themselves flexibly in the space they cover in order to maintain a certain distance to the opponent closest to them. In zonal marking, a player must cover the space around his position, loosely moving his position to any nearby opponent and staying close to them. Thirdly, space-oriented zonal marking is used a lot less frequently than man and position-oriented zonal marking. The reference in this case is space. The team shifts towards the effective playing space in that particular moment and tries to occupy it. On paper, one might think this sounds intelligent. The space would be overloaded and the opponent's short pass combinations would be destroyed by a lot of pressure. In practice, however, this isn't the case. And if the opponents are even remotely smart, they can move into many open spaces particularly away from the ball, and destroy the opponent's formation. It's one of the main reasons as to why the high press system used by Dutch Total Football seems pretty comical when compared to a modern press. Finally, ball-oriented zonal marking is also a key development of the defensive game. In this system, the team will move depending on where the ball is on the pitch. For example, if the ball is out of the left, then the back line will shift to this side and cover the space. If the ball is moving up, then the whole team will shift up while if it's coming towards the fence, then they will move backwards. All this movement will happen regardless of how many players the opposition has near the ball, as the only threat for the team is a ball into a dangerous area. This concept of ball-oriented zonal marking is very present in the modern game, and is used by very successful managers such as Maurizio Sarri. And thus, with these basic principles, the seeds had been planted for football tactics to flourish, and gave life to new and improved ways of overcoming the opposition. Fast forward 30 years into the modern game and these ideas are still very much present within modern tactics. However, while old school football would usually fall into either one or the other category, the modern game has come to the conclusion that a mixture of both is the best solution. Let's take a look at some key examples. From the front line to the defence, zonal and man marking is common within most managers' playbooks. A key example of this is in a typical high pressing structure. For this video we're going to be using Thomas Tuchel's Chelsea as an example. Chelsea has shifted from a 3-5-2 to 3-4-2-1 throughout the season, but the main principles of their defensive shape remain consistent. Their central players will adopt a zonal marking system and look to close off passing lanes into the centre, forcing play out wide, where the wingbacks in James and Marcus Alonso or Chilwell will man-mark the opposition's wingers, and the players surrounding the winger will close off any options around the player in possession. This mixture of zonal and man-marking can also be seen in Chelsea's back three, who adopt a man-oriented zonal marking system, meaning if an attacker enters one of the centre-back zones, then he will step out, with the other two moving further inside to cover any potential flicks into the space. However, this is not the only approach, and teams such as Gasperini's Atalanta have achieved incredible success by adopting a more man-oriented approach to the press. In their 3-4-3, Zapata and Malinowski will cover the centre-backs, with Piscina marking one of the full-backs, and the other being marked by the wing-back Zappa Costa. The two midfielders in De Roon and Freuler, along with the other wingback in Maele, will cover the opposition's midfielders, leaving the defenders in a 3v3 against the opposition strikers. Generally speaking, the modern game features many more possible formations and tactics, meaning there are a lot more factors to keep in mind at all times. And this is the main reason why we see the use of both man and zonal at all times, given that it's the best solution to the opponent's tactics. For example, a team with a front three may look to use zonal marking against the back four, but if playing against the back three, such as a 3-4-3, then they may switch to a man-marking high press in the first phase. The same goes for a defence. If against three strikers, then a back four would look to close off space between themselves to stop any runs in behind, 
playing as a back three, will take the responsibility of a man each in defence. The combinations are endless, but are present within each phase of the game. So, to wrap things up, a defensive standard doesn't exist. And while the modern game is still directly tied to ideas from over 40 years ago, the defensive meta is constantly changing and developing. As players become more tactically aware, the managers are always going to have to be one step ahead to trick the opponent. And we're never too far away from a revolutionary approach to the game. And now let me know what you think. What's your favourite type of marking and what do you think the future holds for innovative ways of defending? Let me know in the comments down below, along with any suggestions for future videos. And if you want to support the channel then check out my Patreon page for exclusive content. Or simply leave a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.